Congressman Tim Ryers from Ohio, and he's a Democrat who won easily on Tuesday. He also thinks that the Democrats have to swing back at the Republicans. He joins us now. Congressman Ryan, thank you for joining us. Good to be with you. All right. Uh, Congressman, uh, do you generally agree with uh, what we just heard from Congressman Grayson, that the Democrats need to do a, a hell of a better job of fighting back all across the country? Yeah, let me just say, you know, I think the talk as we move from the election day to the process of governing, of saying, listen, we're open to compromise, I think in contradiction is okay. But I think the second they start introducing the same backwards policies that got us into the mess in the first place, we got to fight them. Listen, we're open to compromise if they're reasonable, but this gang, uh, from all evidence that has been talked about this election, um, it is, is going to implement the same policies that got us into the first place. So, yeah, are we open if you're going to invest in education? Yeah, are we open if you're going to protect Social Security and Medicare? Of course we are. But their, their budget, which is the only thing we have to judge on from, from what they proposed a couple of years ago in the last two years, privatizes Medicare, privatizes Social Security, and cuts education funding by 25%. So we can talk about how nice it would be to compromise, but the minute they want to cut those things and they want to, you know, give uh, rich people tax cuts, I need, I think we need to, we need to fight them tooth and nail. Well, I got to ask you about that specifically, since it happened today. Uh, the president seemed to signal that he was going to give in on the tax cuts. Do you think that's a mistake? big mistake. I think it's a huge mistake. I think th those are the critical issues that we can say, yeah, we're open to compromise, but if you cut taxes for wealthy people, I'm going to veto it. I just think it's bad public policy, it's bad economics, and it sends a horrible signal, not just to our base voters, but I think to those people who did vote in this election, I think it was economics that they voted on. I think health care and you know, the, the alternative energy investments and the Pell Grants and what we did for education reform will put money back into the pockets of people in the country, but it hasn't happened yet. So these people are voting because they're sick and tired of 30 years of bad economic policies, bad trade policies, and declining family income. Families are working three months more today than they were in the late 1970s, and the top 1% has seen huge increases in their income while the middle class is struggling. So when, when you come with tax cuts for wealthy people and 300 or 400 bucks for the average middle class family, you got to step up and you got to veto it. I'm sorry. I love the president. I, I, I love him. But you can't do this anymore. Congressman Ryan, uh, when asked who uh, the American voters thought caused the economic collapse, uh, bankers came in overwhelming, number one. Uh, the Republicans came in number two, and then and the president came in number three. Uh, and I should say clearly, President Bush came in number two, to be specific, and then President Obama came in number three. Uh, but when they asked, hey, uh, those voters who think the banks caused the collapse, who are they more likely to vote for? They answered Republican. Is that does that make any sense to you? Well, I, I think what happened was we no, it doesn't make any sense. But we diluted our message. You know, um, we should have been talking about Wall Street reform and who voted against it. You know, what the banks were doing, loaning thirty five, thirty six dollars for every dollar they had, and and how they were very reckless. And we should have just hammered them. And that should have create. We should have created. You know, and it's easy to Monday morning quarterback, but we should have created a national echo chamber on who voted with the banks and who voted to spank the banks. And uh, I think the messages got too confused. We should have had one or two key, maybe three national issues that we all talked about. Everybody was singing from the same hymnal. And I think we would have had a better response um, from the voters knowing at least who was on their side. All right. Thank you, Congressman Tim Ryan. We appreciate your time.